Welcome classic rock fans to an episode of Beneath the Covers and today we're looking at this dark and mysterious cover which is the Sabbath debut album released in 1970 and beloved of Lester Bangs as you all know. This album, there's no doubt this album is seen as a ground-breaking album. Many would argue that it uh, sets the blueprint for what would become heavy metal. That's obviously a debatable point, but nevertheless, it's certainly the, the title track of this album is certainly seen as a precursor to doom metal, a genre that uh, was certainly unfamiliar to me when uh, I was growing up with heavy metal. It's a devastating album with those down-tuned dark Iomi riffs and the that tableau of images and the pointing very much to the occult. That's something that the band refutes, of course. This iconic cover was photographed at Maple Durham Watermill in Oxfordshire uh, on the River Thames, not too far from my own stomping ground, which was uh, Reading, of course. And the photographer was Keith McMillan, who oversaw the overall design. Interestingly, Macmillan goes on to say that there were quite a few uh, photographs taken that morning because it was uh, taken at 4am, I believe. They got this poor model out about 4am to do this. But there were quite a few photographs taken, including a few risque, naughty ones, shall we say. However, Macmillan insists that there are, there are no surviving photographs from this time other than the one we get on the sleeve. There are none tucked away in a box somewhere or perhaps stuffed away under a mattress more appropriately. So if we are going to get a deluxe edition of this album, it's going to be bereft of any of those images we were hoping for. And the model that stands on the front cover is Louisa Livingstone, whose identity uh, only became known, really, uh, associated with this album cover but as late as 2020. Also interesting is that gatefold sleeve that reveals the inverted cross and a poem written by um, Roger Brown. And it was a very unnerving poem full of sort of nasty visuals of uh, you know um, uh, severed bird wings poppies that bleed mute birds tired of repeating yesterday's terrors all leading to the line of course which seems to anchor it to the the main uh, the main cover which is the by the lake a young girl waits and seeing she believes half unseen she smiles faintly the distant tolling bell and the still falling rain imagery that's as evocative as it is, it is provocative and uh, and it seems to feed into uh, that first uh, the, the eponymous title track of this album. The poem may well have been written by Roger Brown but the, the design of the inverted cross was by uh, Sandy Field. Good Lord is that her name almost as bad as Dusty Hill. Although it's said that the the inverted cross wasn't supposed to be like a satanic image it was actually St Peter's cross who of course was crucified upside down. The band, however, was supposed to be a bit miffed at the use of the inverted cross in the artwork, although Ozzy Osbourne states that he doesn't recall there being any bad feeling about it at all. Tony Iommi, however, says that uh, uh, Alex Sanders, the high priest of the Wiccan religion, turned up at a gig once and it was all quite strange, really. And also in the liner notes of the 1998 reunion, uh, unbeknownst to the band, the uh, Black Sabbath was launched in the US, set, US with a party with the head of the Church of Satan presiding over the proceedings. All of a sudden, Sabbath were very much seen as a satanic band. Keith McMillan is famed for this album cover, but he also did covers for uh, uh, David Bowie and Rod Stewart as well, as well as doing videos, I think, for Motorhead and Kate Bush. So he's uh, done other stuff other than this album cover. Keith McMillan, of course, is working as an in-house album designer for Vertigo uh, Records. And Vertigo, what a wonderful label. They were all these strange and progressive bands they had on their on their books, from you know, Caterpillar to Coliseum. Black Sabbath, um, Juicy Lucy, and Gentle Giant, of course. Uh, some great, great stuff there. Of course, uh, Keith McMillan uh, was introduced to Olive Wiper, who was the uh, head of, I think it was the uh, label president, of course. They'd been fairly close before, I think. I think uh, Keith McMillan had assisted um, Olav or, when he was um, directing, I believe, a Fleetwood Mac video to a black and white video for Albatross. Or, Man of the World or something like that. Mike Mellon said in preparation for this album cover he actually listened to the album on on tape. He said it wasn't his cup of tea really. Describing himself as an old hippie all this dark gloomy heavy metal stuff just wasn't his bag. But nevertheless it certainly suggested certain images to him as he was uh, listening. Keith Mellon of course was uh, heavily influenced by the surrealist René Magritte being one of them. 
I think, I don't know if you can detect any influences like that in this cover. Certainly the colouring is rather strange. And the colouring of this album is explained by the fact that he used um, Kodak infrared uh, aerochrome film, which was actually designed for aerial uh, photographs. And it gave this picture a rather pinkish hue. Very reminiscent of uh, Colise Colosseum's Valentine's Suite, of course, which is another sleeve I think he's responsible for. But then he put the film through various other processes to make it feel or look grainy and undefined. So the photo shoot was taken at Maple Durham Windmill, which was uh, a bit of a wreck, a bit of an old ruin at that time. It had a very dark and mysterious, um, ghostly feel to it. Now, of course, it's uh, probably a popular site for tourists. Uh, um, it's probably lost all that original ambience. He contacted the London model agency and they sent over Louisa Livingstone. He said she was absolutely fantastic. She was very uh, accommodating and cooperative. She was also very small as well. And he said that works with our, our favour. He wanted someone quite diminutive and uh, a smaller frame because it, it added the more grandeur to the landscape. Louisa has gone on to say that, uh, I'm sure Macmillan said it was for Black Sabbath, but I don't know if that meant anything to me at the time. Uh, she says, I remember it, it being freezing cold during the shoot. I had to get up at four o'clock in the morning. Keith was rushing about with dry ice, throwing it into the water. It didn't seem to be working very well, so he ended up using a smoke machine instead. That was her own recollections of, the, of that morning. Macmillan says that Louisa wasn't wearing anything under that cloak, which led to some rather risque photographs. Although Macmillan said we decided to move away from using any, anything, any hint of any hint of eroticism to it as uh, that somehow distracted from the very foreboding and ominous atmosphere that we were looking to go for. And the framing and composition of this picture adds to the very dark vibe. There is a stuffed crow in the picture which um, was placed on the tree stump that was actually on the back cover so to speak. We had him wired onto the tree he says. His name was Yorick and he used to sit in my studio. Keith McMillan also goes on to say there was a black cat that was given to Louisa, although she has no memory of holding a cat at all. She, she says she just thinks it's the way her hands are positioned. With the model, uh, Louisa perfectly understood that she it was about the evoking of a specific mood rather than an image. And um, what he likes about this uh, photograph, the way it's been processed, is that it gives the image of something just being snapped at a, a brief moment in time that wasn't in any way contrived at all, which, he, uh, which I think we all rather like, to be honest with you. Of course, that's not the whole package. There is that poem, of course, by Roger Brown, and the photograph by Sandy Field, who um, Macmillan says he knew from art college. And to top it all off, Olaf Viper, or Viper said that uh, he had this inspired idea of releasing this record on February the 13th, 1970, a Friday the 13th. Of course, uh, a day in England that's just supposed to be particularly of uh, ill omen. The drummer Bill Ward has gone on to say about this cover that he loved it, it was mysterious and it was kind of where we hung our hats at the time. Uh, it was all fantastic to me. I hated when I opened up the middle part and somebody put an upside down, upside down cross in it. I hated that because that wasn't who we were. However, the model Louisa Livingstone thought that, that she enjoyed, that she liked the cover, but the photograph could in fact be anybody, <laughs> really. Interestingly, um, uh, sometime after the album's release, a woman came to one of Black Sabbath's concerts claiming to be the woman that was photographed on that famous sleeve. Louisa Livingstone goes, goes on to say that that certainly wasn't her. She never attended or went to any Black Sabbath concerts, so who was that mysterious woman, eh? Anyway, this is the episode of Beneath the Covers is on that first Black Sabbath album. I hope you enjoyed this. Please be sure to click like, subscribe, and uh, check all the links below the video. Do all that stuff. Other than that, I hope you're all well and healthy. And more importantly, of course, is that you keep listening.